Hello everyone. We finally bought a brand new Tesla. Tesla Model Y, long range, all wheel drive, dual motor. Uh, it's our first plug-in fully electric vehicle that we've owned. Cindy had a Lexus CT 2000 a number of years ago that was a hybrid, not plug-in. So now we're fully on board with that. And in the process, those of you that haven't bought a Tesla before, there's some things we learned. We did a lot of research and there were still a couple things that uh, we either didn't know or we think that it may not be completely evident and we want to share those things with you. So uh, without getting into it uh, too much more, we'll just cut right to some of these things that we learned. The first thing was just the process. Super easy, super simple. There's not a lot. When you look at a Tesla, you know what model it is pretty pretty easily if you've seen a few Teslas. Uh, there's the Model S, the Model 3, the Model X, the Model Y. You can kind of spell out the word that that looks like <laughs> from there, but and by no uh, accident, right? So the price doesn't vary much. There's a very few options you can get. The biggest one really being the color. It comes, the Model Y anyway, and I think the Model 3, comes in white. If you want a different color, absolutely, there's a few choices, you just pay. So it's like $1,000. Uh, we also got a built-in trailer receiver hitch for our adventures, and we can take our bike rack and, and take that, uh, put that on there. And that's another thousand dollars, which really is about what it would cost to have somebody mount one properly, buy it and mount it properly on your car. So we went with that. And then um, the other option that Cindy got for her was the performance wheels. You know, they, they're flat black. They look really cool. She liked those, so we got that as well. But that's it. I mean, usually they're you go to a car dealership with all the packages of you know, on the stereo system, and all that's just standard. So it makes the process really simple and there's no haggling. So it didn't come out like, oh, we got a deal on this. You know what that person in the Tesla paid for their car. That's just how that works. And it actually is quite nice compared to other car buying experiences. One other thing that we didn't get was the, uh, the self-drive, which is $10,000 option. You can get it anytime after you buy the car. They'll actually just kind of upload it to your car. It's a software thing. Um, it has autopilot that comes with it. And from our friends, they say it really is just a little bit more for the self-drive. And, and we are not the type that really want to fall asleep and let the car do everything for us. Uh, so it's really just kind of fancy cruise control uh, the way it is now, but better than standard cruise control so there's that so that process ended with getting the car and that part of the process was contactless they basically said hey your car's here is a VIN number so we set up the insurance they said okay it's delivered now you can fill out the rest of your paperwork Cindy went and uh, paid for the rest of the car and then the insurance paper, all that stuff, so they can deliver it to you. So, um, you know, whatever you need for the car. So if you're financing it, you have to provide insurance um, because they want that. Uh, if whatever that you have to do to finish before they deliver it, they want that. And then once they get that, they say, okay, schedule a date for delivery. We don't, they flat out said, we didn't have to be here when they delivered it. We'll drop it off in front of your house with everything inside locked in there and there you go. You just accept it when you get home, which is an email. They send you an email after they drop it off. Uh, I walked outside, there's a car in the driveway, uh, brand new Tesla, So, which was cool. Cindy came out, she went on her email, there's the email, she went and accepted it. It was the right model and everything she wanted, uh, but everything's still locked in the car. So then you go to the Tesla app and this is a little minor thing that could get people because it's like getting a Christmas present with without being able to open it. So she couldn't get in. They said, wait a couple minutes and then you'll be able to go in the app and open it. Well, that didn't actually happen. She had to log out of the app, log back into the app, 
And then it recognized that she accepted the car, gave her the option to unlock the car, and then she unlocked it and was able to get in. And uh, she's really happy. So got the wide interior, which we love, and it keeps it nice and cool. Um, I just have to be really careful <laughs> without spilling anything in there. She also got some mats, and she got a charger as well. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So the second thing uh, that we, we actually learned this before we bought the car and we still chose to buy it, but Tesla does not qualify for the federal tax credit for buying an electric vehicle. I think it's 200,000 cars. After that, the company sells that many electric vehicles. You don't get a tax credit for buying their vehicles anymore. Probably because the government wants to encourage more electric vehicle manufacturers to get in, which is happening uh, next year. I think there's going to be a bunch more out there. So just factor that in your price comparisons if, if uh, that is something you want. Now states different. Every state's different. So if you live in a state like Nevada, like we do, they don't charge state income tax, so you don't get much of a break on zero. Other states are still offering, regardless of the federal tax uh, credit not being available on the Tesla, other states you can. So take a look at that um, when you're doing your uh, research on, on the car. All right, the one, the next one surprised me. Uh, a little bit was the insurance. Insurance is about 30% more than the insurance we pay on our current vehicles. So I, I couldn't totally understand why. Um, I, I, maybe the repair costs are really high with all those batteries. If it gets in an accident, I don't know. Um, and maybe it, it has a lot of safety features. So it, it's a very safe vehicle. So I don't think that is the issue. The other thing that it might be is is that I can see somebody getting distracted um, by the technology. The, the big, basically laptop, large laptop computer screen right in the middle has tons of things. I mean, you can make whoopee cushion fart noises on all this. I mean, you could sit there and play with that all day. It actually has games in there. You're supposed to click that I'm a passenger to do those kinds of things, but it can be distracting and I'm sure people have gotten into accidents while playing with that, especially when the car's new and you're trying to figure out how to change the vents or whatever the case may be, make the mirrors full, you know, those kind of things. Once you get used to it, it's probably a little faster, maybe a little less of an attention distraction to the driver. I'm not sure, be prepared for the insurance increase though. Check with your insurance company before you buy it. I didn't, I'm not overly concerned about it, uh, but it was a little bit of a shock. The next, the next thing that uh, we should have done before we got the car delivered was get 240 volt outlet installed in our house. If you don't already have one in our garage where the car is parked, it and the Model Y is on the back left side, just so you know if you're looking for a place to put it. But the uh, 120 volt that comes with it, you plug it right into your, you know, grounded outlet, and it delivers us a whopping five miles per hour of charge, which is not enough. So uh, we're not gonna be able to manage with that uh, charging rate. So we've already scheduled an electrician to come. Uh, we have an adapter. So really all you need from the Tesla store, it plugs into the existing uh, charging cable that comes with the car. And then it's got a 240 volt uh, plug on the other end and you just plug it in there. Now you could get this very fancy looking Tesla charging stand um, and it, it would look nice in your garage, it takes up more space, but it looked nice in your garage and it will charge at 240 volt, but it just looks a little nicer than just plugging it into the wall. So if you're into that, you know, it says Tesla on it and everything else. Um, now the supercharging stations, I've heard, you know, they, if you're low, they start at like 600 miles an hour and then, so you can charge, uh, they start to slow down as you get more charge. And uh, one of my friend's model, standard range model threes, when he goes down to, uh, you know, kind of lower value and needs to charge it, it takes him about 40 minutes to get to a full charge. So much different than your house, but 120 volt, five miles an hour, not gonna work. So not for us anyway. So take that into consideration as well. And then the last one was actually surprised me the most by far. This great technology that Tesla puts into these vehicles. I mean, you know, the software uploads, they have a dog mode where you just click that and it blows fan air into the car 
while you're not in it. But there's no, you know, your engine's not running or anything. Nobody can drive off with it. Uh, you just, it just blows cool air in there. You could do that for yourself. So it's cool when you get back. Obviously you're using some electricity, but uh, it's kind of a nice feature. Um, doesn't have ventilated seats, by the way, but that wasn't the one. The big one is the fact that it, when we tried to sync it to our garage door opener, well, there was no way to do that. Cindy then learned through a tutorial that you schedule a service appointment with Tesla, you take it in, they install something, and then they charge you a monthly fee for this home link uh, connection. Now, it probably does more than just your garage door if you have one of those super connected houses where um, your brother runs your house, but we don't. I mean, we have a few things, but nothing that fancy. And, but we do have a garage door opener that uses, you know, it's like any other automatic garage door opener, uh, some kind of signal to open it. Can't do that unless you get this installed and then pay a monthly fee. I refuse to pay a monthly fee to open my own garage in the house that I own. So not gonna happen. We use the old school handheld remote that goes in the center console and we're just gonna go with that. Still kind of surprising. So just a few things. With all of that, we love the car. We absolutely love it. It is the funnest car to drive. We just we just love driving that car and we love the you know fact that we don't have to go to gas stations and we're not polluting the environment much and or less I should say. And then the other thing that we love and it's super Ready? fast. It Ready? accelerates Watch. zero to we're gonna go, 60. what is it called? More fast, <laughs> faster than. We're gonna go. What is it, Plaid? So, now I, we also have a 700 horsepower Ford F-150 Shelby off-road vehicle that is also super fun to drive for different reasons. But it kills dinosaurs. It uses premium unleaded, and it it uh, it really is not a daily driver. It's great off-road, really fun, but on the road. By far, we absolutely love the Tesla and we're super excited to take it on road trips and then Cindy driving it to work, doing her business uh, day to day. So we'll have this thing on road trips. Uh, please stay tuned. Hit this, uh, the subscription button, hit the notifications. You'll know when we post our next videos. Our next videos, we have two trips that we just took. We just came back. In fact, we had to delay accepting the Tesla to uh, finish one of the trips. That was to Park City. Uh, which we absolutely love Park City. We did some mountain biking up there and some other things we'll share with you. And then we also went to Greece, literally right before that for a couple weeks to the Greek Isles. So those are coming. Uh, hit the notifications. You'll get notified when we post those. And until next time, we'll see you.